My order of parts for rebuilding the Keg Networks has arrived. A whole bunch of caps, a few resistors I was running low on, and there should be some Molex connectors in here too. I picked up a B&K 470 CRT tester a couple weeks ago, and it was missing some of the adapters, so I thought I'd roll my own. So this would be a fun little side project. Now I thought I'd take this opportunity to segue into a related topic that I get asked about a lot, which is how do I go about finding capacitors? Uh, what type do I choose? Where do I get them from? And so on. Uh, I was also specifically asked to pick a simple radio project and to describe how I selected the capacitors. Well, unfortunately, I don't think I have any simple radios to restore right now. Uh, well, no, that's not true. I guess I've got one, which is uh, kind of an interesting little radio, so I'll pull that out. But it doesn't have very many capacitors in it, so I may jump around to a few other projects to show you how I chose the capacitors. This is the radio I was referring to. It's known as an Emersonet, or Model 540A, I believe. It's one of, if not the smallest, AC-powered tube radio ever made. And it's, these can go for a lot of money, especially the ones in other colors. This is the most common brown Bakelite model. They also came, I think, in white, green, and red. But unfortunately, this one has a nice crack running through it. Not, not too visible, especially from the front, but that certainly does detract from the value. So, I will pull up the schematic for this, and we'll take a look inside, too. I'm quite sure how this back comes off. The screws are already kind of broken away. Looks like I'll have to disconnect the internal antenna until I can get the back off. Yeah, maybe I can just put it to the side here. I found the schematic online at Nostalgia Air. So we've got the schematic. Oops, looks like my printer's crapping out. So <laughs> that's supposed to be the alignment notes and the parts locator. And replacement parts list, most importantly. Before we get into that, I'm going to pop this radio open. I'm lucky with the knobs, <laughs> came off quite easily. And I already removed the one screw back here that was holding the chassis in place. So I guess I don't really need to take this antenna off after all. I can just slide it out together with the chassis. Alright, so there's a tube locator inside there. Something just fell off. The tower. Oh yeah, <laughs> can see where that came from. Ooh, boy, this thing is pretty delicate. For some reason, it looks like both of the mounting screws are missing from the speaker. Should be one on either one of these ears, I assume, because right now it's just loose. And that junk we heard falling off was from down below, where one of those wax caps has given up the fight and blown out one end. And that looks awfully charred there, which is a real good indicator that somebody tried plugging this radio in. The electrolytics are bad, it probably shorted out, which uh, overloaded the rectifier and fried that resistor. Or it could have been this cap drawing an excessive load as well. Alright, well, since I've gone this far, maybe this video is also going to become a Friday Night Restoration. Alright, so, now that I've done a bit of a visual inspection on a radio and it looks like it's a decent restoration candidate, 
speaker is fine. Audio output transformer for now, I'll just assume is okay. I can do a resistance check on that. There's no power transformer, so that's not going to be bad. And uh, clearly there's some components that have uh, appear to have been burned out, but we can replace those. Now, I tried printing out this page three times with different settings, and this is the best version I got. I think I just need to go out and get some new ink cartridges. What I was trying to show you is the nice thing about this is that each component in the parts list has a number. In this diagram, they call out each component in the radio visually and show you what number it is. So if you're not that familiar with working on radios, this should help you out to figure out when they say, for example, uh, 6A and 6B electrolytic capacitor, you can look on here and find out. Uh, the number six and see what it's pointing to. So first thing I like to do after a visual inspection is to run through the parts list and see if I've got these on hand. Now this parts list is nice because not only do they show you, not only do they identify the part with a number and show you the value, they also tell you what type of capacitor it is. For example, the first capacitor here capacitor 6. It's a dual capacitor. It's a 30 and a 50 microfarad, 150 volt electrolytic. Um, they, they tell you that it's an electrolytic and likewise further down they mention that some are mica specifically. When they specifically tell you what type it is, like mica, that's really what you want to use when you replace these. Always replace mica with mica. If it's not marked, it's usually either paper or ceramic. Ceramic rarely go bad, but if it is bad, you could replace it with another ceramic of the right type. There are various grades, like C0G, Y5U. Those have to do with the type of ceramic material used and how they respond to temperature changes. Ideally, you can find a marking on the capacitor telling you what it is. But uh, if all else fails, you just can't figure out what type of ceramic cap it is, and you've determined that it is bad, you should be able to use mica. Mica is superior to ceramic, I believe, in, in every property. The reason they use ceramic at all is because it's much cheaper. But as far as I know, you can always replace ceramic with mica. You just have to pay a little more is all. Now there are a bunch of mica caps called out here. They're probably all okay. I'll just assume they are for now. So this block in here where they don't tell you what type of cap they are, these will be the paper caps. Also, once you work on a few radios, you get the hang of it that the smaller value caps, the ones in picofarads or micro-microfarad, those are going to be your mica and ceramic caps. they are larger ones, like a, point zero, like a 0 0.1 microfarad, that's going to be a paper cap. Same with a point zero zero two, and so on. This guy a point zero 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 five or five hundred picofarad. That you could probably go either way. Apparently, they used a paper cap. You could use a mica or possibly even a ceramic there as well. In fact, I I can tell you right now, I don't have any five hundred picofarad paper caps on, or replacements for paper caps on hand, so. I'll either leave it in place, which is probably a bad idea because it's probably leaky, or I'll replace it with a mica because I do happen to have some 500 picofarad mica caps on hand, but they're only 500 volt. That's the other thing you have to pay attention to is the voltage rating. You go too low with the voltage rating, you're very likely to have a blowout, blown out cap like we just saw on the bottom of this chassis. Now, for what I replace paper caps with, uh, I like to go with plastic film. I'm sure you guys have all seen those little yellow caps in various restoration photos online or in other videos of mine. Just dump out a bunch of caps here. So those are these guys. Where most guys get these from is a place called JustRadios.com out of Canada. When I first got it started out in this hobby, I just ordered up an assortment from them most economical way to get started. 
later on as I started running out of the yellow caps, I started ordering some from Mauser, which are these white guys. The yellow ones are, they have no manufacturer's name on them. There's no info other than the value and the voltage rating. So 153K means it's a 0, .0 uh, or rather a, uh, or yeah, a 0 .015 microfarad cap. 1.5 followed by three zeros, 15,000 picofarads or 0 .015 microfarad, and that's 630 volt. From what I've read online, these are very likely to be just uh, made in China, just generic caps. Also some speculation that these might start uh, disappearing because not many, if any, modern devices use caps like this. And when the old stock starts running out, we may have to start switching to these, which are name brand. These are made by Mallory, um, which I'm not sure exists, so they might be under the Cornell Dublier label, like these CDE. There's been a lot of consolidation in the electronics industry. Like I believe Sprague and Dale and uh, a few others are all under Vichy now. No question, these are more expensive than the yellow guys. Like two, three, four times as much. And these are getting a bit harder to find too. In that uh, they have axial leads. All well, these brown chiclet ones you see here, these are the ones that are much easier to find, cost less, because these are more in a more modern packaging style. We call these radio leads. These are meant for mounting on PC boards, but the leads are long enough, you can simply do that, and they work out pretty pretty good. These typically cost a third of what the axial leads cost. Typically you'll find these in two flavors, polyester and polypropylene. As far as I know, it makes no difference whatsoever for radio applications. I believe polypropylene is a little bit higher quality, a little bit lower leakage, but unless you're building like test equipment, it just really won't matter for TV and radio applications. Alright, now another thing that trips a lot of people up is the values themselves. Like this 30 and 50 microfarad on the electrolytic or the 0 0.05 on this 400 volt condenser. Back in the day component values start, uh, had round numbers like that. 10 microfarad, 20 microfarad, 30 microfarad. Sometime in the 50s, they standardized it to go in, oh, I forget what it's called, but it's like a, a mathematical progression. So we don't go 10, 20, 30, we go 10, 22, 33, 47, 56, 68, 82, 100, instead of 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. When you're replacing components, pick the next closest value you can find. For electrolytics I always go a little bit higher so I don't have a 30 but I do have 33's. For 50 that I think going down to 47 will be fine. You gotta remember the tolerance on these components back in the day was terrible. Uh, typically capacitors were like minus 20 percent plus 80 percent. So in other words anything you know between like 40 to about 80 microfarads would be acceptable in this application. For these guys we can usually get pretty closer like 0 0.05 I'll use a 0 0.047 0 0.02 I'll use a 0 0.022 0 0.005 I'll go with a 0 0.0047 and so on. When you get to mica though usually these you can get the oddball values. You can get an 80 picofarad, you can get a 300, you can get a 110, which is nice. Yeah, so that's it. I will assume that the mica caps are good. I will dig up polyester or polypropylene caps for this block, and I will dig up a 33 and a 47 microfarad rated uh, for higher than 150. That's the other thing I should mention is these voltage ratings. 
you have to meet or exceed them, in general, exceed them, especially when it comes to these plastic caps. They're pretty much all rated for 630 volts, which is higher than you need for any of these. 200, 500 volts, 600 volts, just go at 630 across the board. You won't even have to think about it. For the electrolytic, those do come in a wide range of voltages, 100 volt, 150 volt, 160 volt, 200 volt, 250, and so on. I like to go at least a little bit higher. 160 is probably okay. I'm going to look around for 200 or 250 volt caps. These are used in the power supply. The line voltages today are a little bit higher. So we could actually be hitting 150 or a little bit higher when I plug this radio in. So I like to have the overhead. There's no reason to stress out these components unnecessarily. Oh, okay, that leads us to one final thing, at least for the electrolytics, which is temperature rating. I would not even give any thought to the temperature rating for these guys. They, their specs far exceed what's necessary in this application. But electrolytics, typically, the cheapo ones, are rated for 85 degrees Celsius. If you spend a few more bucks, or cents really, you can get caps that are rated for 105 degrees Celsius. Not that it's going to get over the boiling point of water inside your radio, but again, it's just a matter of, for a few cents more, why not go with a higher rated cap? So, for example, here is a 33 microfarad, 450 volt cap rated for 105 degrees Celsius. Exceeds the original specs in every regard. More capacitance, more voltage, more temperature but it'll work just fine and last a very long time. Okay, now that we've got some idea of what type of capacitors we need, what values and what voltage rating, where can we get them? If you try going to your local Radio Shack or electronics parts store, you're probably not going to have much luck, especially not with uh, voltage ratings this high. You could also try maybe contacting a local ham radio or radio collecting club or if you have local uh, ham fests or computer swap fest you might get lucky. But generally I order everything that I use online and for beginners I recommend they go to justradios.com as the name implies, they really focus on the radio restoration community and they will have all the values you're going to need for a radio like this especially. Not only that, but they uh, actually do have some capacitor values in the older style. So, for example, here I'm at the 50 volt electrolytic capacitor section. And you see it goes in values of 1, 2.2, 3.3, 4.7, and so on. But occasionally they do have like a 5 or a 50. But we need higher voltage caps, so we need at least 160. And here we can actually get 30 and 50. But he also has 47 and 33. 160, though, I, I don't quite like that. I'd want to go a little bit higher. So if we go up here, we can get 33, 25, 250 volts rather, or uh, 47 or 50 at 250 volts. I know some of these you can get both in the radial and the axial style. In these types of radios, all the leads usually come out the bottom, so I would go with the radial type. Now, as for replacing the paper caps, it's over here on the left-hand side. 630 and 400 volt film capacitors. All but really large capacitance caps are 630 volt. And as I was saying, for values under 0.001, you use mica, or he also suggests polystyrene. Polystyrene are really low noise caps, but uh, they have the unfortunate side effect of they melt at low temperatures. So when you're soldering them in with a big old soldering iron or gun, you can actually melt the capacitor inside. Or if it's operating in a really hot environment, you could have some issues. So you don't see too many polystyrene caps around anymore. 
So for example, we need a 0 0.05, 400 volt at least. Now this one though is actually on the line. So let's get back to that later. The next one we've got here is 0 0.02 microfarad, 400 volt. So if we scroll around, there we go, 0 0.02, 630 volt, 38 cents. There we go. Now he calls these metallized polyester film orange dips. Not to be confused with orange drops. Orange dips are like the kind I was just showing you. They look like little chiclets, the leads coming out of one side. That's what these are. Work perfectly fine. If you want axial ones that are less cylinder with a lead coming out of each end, you go down to the metallized polypropylene film tubular axial axials. And here we can also get a point point oh two uh, down here. Uh, oh, sorry, these are actually metallized polyester. I guess the metallized polypropylene are only smaller values. Got to go down to the metallized polyester for the point zero two. And like I was saying, metallized polypropylene, metallized polyester, effectively zero difference when it comes to radios. Now he just happens to have zero point zero two, but if you get a digi key or mouse or electronics, they will not. They will only have the zero point zero two two. Either one of these will work just fine. So and and so on. So we also need a point zero zero five. Let me get one of those right here, or point zero zero four seven. Either one of these will work just fine. And that leaves us with the mica caps. So, as I say, they're usually good, but if you do have some issues or you just want to replace them they do have mica caps here as well that's what the rightmost column is so for example this uses a 220 picofarad mica cap right here 220 89 cents 110 79 cents right here so that's it for this radio it's pretty basic now just for the Heck of it, I will also show you Mauser Electronics, where I normally order stuff from. This can be a bit intimidating if you haven't used this website before, because they sell thousands and thousands of different types of capacitors. But once you get used to their dynamic search engine, I don't think it's too bad. This is the home page. If you go down here on the left-hand side to Passive Components, as opposed to active components like a transistor, you'll find the capacitors and resistors. And if we drill down into capacitors, they, they've tweaked this website over time, but this is the current incarnation as of September 2012. Now what, what you can do is you can just go right down to this section here and pick a capacitor like uh, 0 0.02 microfarad They have these sorted by value, so there's 0 0.02, and it'll, it'll show you up here, 294. So they have 294 capacitors with the 0 0.02 microfarad rating. And let's dial in 630 volts. Now we're down to only 38 choices. Now if you want, you could also pick, use a, a film capacitor, but you don't have to you'll find out that as you pick these various parameters it's going to be eliminating mica caps right off the board because there are no mica caps made that are 0.02 630 volts. Once you've picked your various parameters as to your satisfaction you can look apply filters and it'll show you a list of the hits. And you'll find out right away too that most of these are not in stock. If we check off the box up here stocked it's really going to drop that choice down. In fact, there's only one. They have one capacitor in stock that's 0 0.02, 630 volt. It happens to be Panasonic, which is a pretty decent quality cap. It's probably actually the same one that Just, uh, Just Radios is offering. They have 2500 in stock, and they're 82 cents. So Once you get the hang of this and using this search filtering, I think uh, Mauser is also a pretty... Pretty simple system to 
use. Now I mentioned that there was a capacitor that was a little bit special, which was that line cap. The 0 0.05 microfarad 400 volt line bypass capacitor. That goes right across the AC line. You want to use a cap rated for AC line operation, which are these in the middle, the X1, Y1, X2, Y2 safety capacitors. The X type mean they go across the AC line, right from the hot to the neutral. The Y go from either hot or neutral to ground. The ones that are rated X slash Y means you can use them in either scenario. These up here are ceramic discs, the ones further down are film. Uh, let's see, if, on the schematic, which I don't have in front of me right now, so let's see if I pull that up. Uh, that cap. Uh, yeah, pretty much is right across the AC line, although they have it after the pilot light in this 10 ohm resistor, so I'll just go with an X type for that. So. Either the X or the X2, they say 0 .05, so 0 .047 is pretty close, so I'll get with this 59 cents. So if you went with just radios and went through all these parts, including the mica caps, I don't think you'd even crack the $20 level. So pretty reasonable, but again, you might have to wait a couple weeks. Uh, and I just see so you notice here he has an option for faster airmail for an extra $2. So that's about it. I want to go back to the workshop and go through my parts that I have on hand and see what I can come up with. I'll do that in a second video because uh, this one's gotten pretty long with all my ramblings. 